Um, welcome to this um, session on making the most of texts um, um, from Spotlight. Oh, we're still joining, so I'll just give you a few minutes before I launch into it. While we're waiting for everyone to join, perhaps you could let me know where you're from uh, in the chat. I'm, I'm sitting in, oh, in Edinburgh. All right, great. And you can see me okay. <laughs> Hey, Ukraine, Berlin, South Korea, my goodness. And you're all in my kitchen in Edinburgh. <laughs> it's amazing. With only my dog and some, some gummy bears to keep me company. I hope they're not going to be too distracting. That's fantastic. Oh, great. Mannheim, Nuremberg, Salzburg, Chile. Amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Cool. All right, then I'm going to um, start sharing my screen um, and uh, get on with the show because we don't have an awful lot of time. So um, let's get on with it. So first, um, I'm going to let you know what, um, hang on, there we go, um, what we're going to do today. Um, first, I'm going to ask you, why do you use text at all to get us started? And I'm going to give you a little bit of a presentation about um, Spotlight, very brief, two slides, just in case there's anybody out there who's never heard of Spotlight before, just to let you know um, what we're all about. Um, then I've got three activities planned that will hopefully help you deal with text in the classroom. Um, the first one is um, using word clouds at different stages also in the lesson, in the reading lesson. Um, and then we're going to try out um, a dictogloss quite quickly. And then I'll, I'll let you know about jigsaw reading. And at the end of all that, I'm going to um, show you Spotlight in the Classroom. A lot of people don't know that we have this extra supplement, especially for teachers, giving them ideas of how to use the texts in the magazine. Sound good? <laughs> okay then. Let's see. So first, I'm going to ask you um, to get, go to Mentimeter do you, or menti.com. You can open it in a browser or maybe you have the app um, um, and answer this question. Let me just share the slide. So you should be able to see the answers coming in. So if you go to menti.com and use the code at the top here, 15647058. Um, then you should be able to answer the question that why do you, you specifically, use text in the language classroom? I'd like to know. And then hopefully these answers will be vis visualized in the Mentimeter screen. And so we can have a look at what your ideas are. OK, so go and <laughs> do that now. Ah, here we go. Here come the answers. Perfect. Quick swig of water. And somebody says, I don't know. Mm -hmm. To get information across. Excellent, to improve vocabulary and reading skills of my students in general, but also for translation into English and German, yeah. Vocabulary, yeah, great, because I mean, yeah, that's, I always feel like you, you as a speaker can't get enough vocabulary, rich vocabulary across, and texts are really great for that. They're often really rich in collocations and vocabulary. Exposure to real life texts, yeah, so authenticity, to improve students' writing skills, definitely, if they're able to um, analyze the text and pick out bits that they think they could use themselves as a discussion guideline. Yeah, okay. All oh, those answers coming in. Motivation, grammatical structures. Brilliant. For fun, experiencing grammar and use for creativity. Yeah, fantastic. Knowledge, reading comprehension. Not to bore students, so they, to, to interest and engage students then. Yeah, brilliant. So and it's all, they're also great for contextualizing new language items, aren't they? So having it in context in a situation rather than just sort of, well, here's a great word. Um, practice in listening and in reading. Um, and also as a basis for then controlled production later on and a spring, often springboards for discussion, role play and that kind of thing. Yeah, but I like all your answers. Great. So you see them all there. Reading aloud for pronunciation, yeah, also. Well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Writing skills to show that there's a lot of interesting things you can learn by reading in a foreign language. Absolutely. 
getting a different perspective. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for participating and letting me know that there is somebody out there and I'm not sitting here alone. I'll go back to my um, uh, PowerPoint now. Where is it going? There we go. It looks the same. Okay. There we go. So Spotlight, the magazine, has lots of texts. It's a monthly magazine, um, but now we have actually 14 issues a year. And it has some really um, cool features. It was designed uh, for German speakers to learn English. So we have translations in um, German at the bottom of the text. So, and also it's a great um, way to introduce current up-to-date texts um, from about A2 level. Um, and, but you can also see quite easily that the texts are graded from A2 to C2. And so you can see with the color coding and the little symbols that um, what, what level your text should be. They also have recordings which are available on the audio CD or on the download. And you can see what's um, available as a listening if by lo looking out for the, the headset. Um, and it also has grammar, vocabulary, and cultural extras. And these are also all covered in Spotlight Plus, which is an extra sort of um, exercise notebook, sort of little workbook thing. And if you want to have a corresponding, ex if you're looking for a corresponding exercise to go with your text, um, you can look out for the plus symbol. And then you'll know there's something there, extra material to be had. Okay, and there's also a language section at the back, so not such recent articles about current affairs, but more dealing with the intricacies of the English language. Okay, so you can see from the contents there what's coming up in the next, in the 521 issue coming out soon. So it gives you an idea of what's available. I think there's a nice, I think six pages all about Liverpool. This is what a double page spread then looks like. So it's really nice, nicely laid out, colorful. And I'm just gonna draw your attention to some of the key features. Uh, just let me move my little screen there. So the level um, of the text is given at the top of each text, like that. Um, the difficult words are underlined and translated in German. So uh, <laughs> if you're not a German speaker, that's not gonna be much help, but it's good at least you've got the, the English words at the side there as a guide. Um, so in the whole magazine, the spelling and the punctuation is in UK English, unless it's marked US. So, and then it's usually North American um, English. So sometimes we've taken texts um, from North America and then we use that, um, the punctuation and spelling from there. And you've also got some highlighted areas um, with interesting words and phrases that are explained, which is quite nice little tips there. Um, and often, and you've also got quite a few exercises. Um, and these are also available to do um, online via the QR code. So that's quite a nice feature as well. And you can, you can, I think you can just download the QR code and flick through all the exercises from the whole magazine. That's a really nice feature. There you go then. So as I said, we do have lots of texts available. <laughs> I mean, I think the great thing about them is they are current and up to date because if you're using a course book, which they're fantastic, of course, because they provide you with a great syllabus, but um, sometimes the texts in the course books can age. Sometimes they age well, sometimes not so well. And if you've been using the same course book for years and years, you might want to just um, grab some nice, interesting texts that are a little bit more up to date and more engaging for your students. Okay, so this, I'm moving on to my first activity here. Um, and this is a word cloud. You've probably seen word clouds before. Um, you can make these by pasting some, some text, whatever text you want, into um, an online platform. There are various ones. I've used wordclouds.co.uk here. You can also use, I think, Wordle um, and Word it out is another one you could try. So my question to you is though, if I've taken all these words from a text, what do you think the text is about? Could you write to me in the chat and tell me what you think the text will be about? And I'll wait patiently for your answers. <laughs> what do you think this text could be about? Oh, hi, Carmen. <laughs> yes, that's right, Sandra, you got it. 
yeah, toys. Mm -hmm. Toy Story. Mr. Potato Head. Mm -hmm. Yep. So some of you got, yeah, well done, Carmen. A restaurant could be about a restaurant. Because of potato, I suppose. So. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lots of different ideas coming in. Boy and girl stereotypes. Yeah, cancel culture. Good buzzword there. Yeah, okay. So it's about, um, it's from the previous um, page, actually. Um, there's a little story about Mr. Potato Head. I'm not going to tell you any more because it's coming up in a minute. Um, but by using a word cloud with words, um, uh, before you launch into a text and just saying, oh, let's look at the text on page five and um, you're piquing your learner's interest and and sort of and you're you're creating a knowledge gap if you like because they're next they want to know now what is the text about where they write what can they learn and you it's also good for generating vocabulary you might want to sort of pick out some words that they might not know you could ask them are there any words in the word cloud that they, you don't know and you could elicit the definitions so that would be a good sort of way to launch into your text work. So here's the text. So a lot of you were right, of course, you might have also already seen it on the double page spread that I showed earlier. So this is a little text about um, Mr. Potato Head being updated. So he's no longer called Mr. Potato Head. They've dropped the Mr. He's just called Potato Head. So the toy is more uh, gender neutral. All right, so that you could then read the text. So it's recommended actually that you don't ask your students to read the text the first time they're confronted with it, because it can be quite off-putting. They might not know, they might get stuck with some pronunciation. It's actually quite a good idea to read it to them and ask them to follow, or perhaps using their finger as you read it to them and then they're getting the correct pronunciation from the get-go. Um, later, once they're more familiar with the text, you could ask them to read it out and check pronunciation. But that's something that we can do online as well, quite well. And then turning then reading into a listening or sort of reading and listening at the same time. So did anyone have a Mr. Potato Head growing up? I never did, but I was always quite intrigued by them. <laughs> OK, so then going back to Helen, of course, okay. <laughs> going back to the word cloud, we can use it again, actually, um, to ask them to reconstruct the text. So once we've dealt with the text, we've read it maybe a couple of times, we've dealt with the um, unfamiliar vocabulary, we can present them with the word cloud again and ask them to recreate the text together. That's quite a tricky task, isn't it? You, you could do it sentence for sentence as well if you want to break it down. That, that might be a little bit intimidating, especially for A2 levels, but B1 levels, they might be able to deal with that quite well. So they've got the keywords there and they have to put the text back to get to retell the story. So by doing something like this, you're immediately getting your students to use the language that they've um, they've come across in the text and they're using it immediately. And also they're analyzing the language, taking it apart, putting putting it back together again. So they're really sort of getting into the nitty gritty of the text rather than just doing a gap fill or talking about it. They're actually learning to write using this. Yes, I would recommend um, this exercise for business people. Business people, in my experience, I've I worked with in as a, a business English teacher for a long time. They love playing with things, especially engineers um, uh, and, and taking things apart. And anything that, that provides a little bit of variety and light re relief is, is a lot of fun. It's also very collaborative thing if you can work with in pairs or in groups and if you're still teaching online of course you probably are then you can get um, students to work on this in breakout rooms and visiting them yes um teaching kids why not you could perhaps as i said before try start with um, shorter text maybe a joke for example and do it sentence for sentence do it sentence um maybe there are five sentences in a joke and you could do one sentence at a time to get them um familiar with the idea and then later on you could have um larger word clouds with more words okay great so when you're thinking about dealing with texts um, in your class, it's, I find it really helpful to think about the PWP framework, right? This is, um, stands for pre, while, and post. 
And I think that's always um, helps me to remember, not just to go, right, let's look at this text on page five, but to have a little teaser at the beginning, if you like. So it helps students prepare to read, piques their curiosity, it motivates and it contextualizes. So a pre-reading task could be looking at a picture, for example, getting uh, generating vocabulary, or just a simple question. Does anyone know? Has anyone heard? That kind of thing. But I think it's it's really helpful. Then a while reading task, it might be note taking, you might ask them a question um, that they need to answer at the, you know, after they've read it or look out for a certain word. You can also apply this framework to listening texts as well. And one of one great uh, while listening task is getting them to listen out for vocabulary, perhaps writing down the sort of new vocabulary, giving each student in your class a card. And when they hear their word, in the listening, they should clap their hands or stand up and, and do a little dance or something like that. But that's quite good. It gets them to sort of really focus and gives them a reason to listen. Because as if you're my age, as you know, we tend to sort of wander off mentally sometimes if we're not fully engaged. But that really helps focus everyone's attention. And then, of course, post reading tasks. I think something that we're all familiar with is like, what do we do with that text then? Why, why have we done it in the first place? What were our aims? What do we want to do with it? Do we want to analyze the linguistic features or the grammar? Do we want to just use it as a springboard for discussion? Or will we go on to um, do a role play or reply to a letter, for example, or do some sort of written task? So, yeah, I just wanted to let you know about that useful framework. And so in the next activity, I'd like you to think about whether and how it applies. Yeah, good. Yeah, ask a question for each person when they hear it, they stand up. Yeah, I like that. Using movement, we're sort of in dire need of movement these days, aren't we? Right, so I've got a little um, quest. No, I've got a little activity for you now. Um, and we're going to do a 20 second language sprint. So we're going to use the chat. You're going to write um, a row of words in the chat, but I don't want you to press return when I say when the alarm goes off. So after the 20 seconds. So no, don't write one word, then press return. Write all your words separated with a comma or a space if you like, and press return when I say when I say so. I'm the boss here. <laughs> okay. So what I want, this is the question. I want you to write as many Australian animals in the chat as possible, starting now. Okay, half time, 10 seconds left. <laughs> That's it, time's up, press. <laughs> Press return. Wow, look at all those animals. <laughs> okay. Wow, okay, and some interesting spelling. A kangaroo, emu, wombat, white shark, Tasmanian devil. Uh, good, and I was looking for one in particular. I was looking for the platypus. Okay, we're gonna try um, a dictogloss now, okay? So I'm gonna read you a text. And so the instructions are here, because I'm gonna read it three times. I'm not gonna read the complete text. So what you need is a pen, pencil, and some paper. And the first time I read the text, I just want you to listen. So no writing, no cheating. The second time I read the text, um, you're allowed to write down keywords or as much as you can. Okay, but still listening to the content. And the third time I read the text, I'd like you to try and write whole sentences. Okay, I'm going to start now. Ready, do you have your pen and paper or your pencil and paper? We're going old school. <laughs> okay, here we go. So again, first time I'm reading, I'm going to read the text. Please just listen. Protecting the platypus. The platypus has lived in Australia's waterways for millions of years, but scientists there say it has lost 22% of its habitat since 1990, mostly because of human action, drought and new predators, and its numbers are declining as a result. Scientists are now asking the Australian government to give the platypus, which is already classified as a near threatened species, extra protection by listing it as a threatened species. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, just 
I mean, normally I wouldn't, but we're, we're, we've got a lot, a lot to get through. All right, so that was the first reading about the platypus. I hope you learned something. <laughs> this time I'm going to read it again and uh, you can write down the keywords. Okay, ready? Protecting the platypus. The platypus has lived in Australia's waterways for millions of years, but scientists there say it has lost 22% of its habitat since 1990, mostly because of human action, drought and new predators, and its numbers are declining as a result. Scientists are now asking the Australian government to give the platypus, which is already classified as a near threatened species, extra protection by listing it as a threatened species. Okay, so you should have some key words now, and I'm going to read it one more time, and this time you should try to re write whole sentences. All right, here we go. Protecting the platypus. The platypus has lived in Australia's waterways for millions of years, but scientists there say it has lost 22% of its habitat since 1990, mostly because of human action, drought and new predators, and its numbers are declining as a result. Scientists are now asking the Australian government to give the platypus, which is already classified as a near threatened species, extra protection by listing it as a threatened species. Okay, there you go. So those were the, your three times. Um, so you should, so what, what would happen now? What would I ask my students to do now? I can't expect them to have the, the complete text as I've read it, can I? But what could I ask them to do now? Any answer, any ideas? You can write them in the chat. But I think I would ask them to get together. So if we're online, get them into um, breakout rooms and to try to put the text together. So they can share, they've probably taken different notes and they can collaborate to try to reproduce the text. Um, so, if we so this is a text here, actually, if you want to compare. Did you know that the, uh, a baby platypus is called a puggle? <laughs> if, you, if there's one takeaway from today, maybe that's it. Um, okay, so yeah, so I think dictogloss is fantastic because you need, there's very little to prepare. You need a text, you need to have thought about which text you want beforehand. You might want to sort of give them some vocabulary, um, but otherwise you can just um, read. And then there's so much to do. They're, they're, they have like a real aim for listening they're, they're practicing note taking, they're collaborating and trying to rewrite the text. And it's just, it's just fantastic because they're really sort of getting into English structures and grammar and using it. So, and, but, and you know, I can't think of a better way to do it. This works again at lots of different levels. If you're starting off at maybe A2, then keep the text short but it really works well for C2. And I think sometimes we forget about our C2 students, C1, C2 students. We think they're sort of very sort of demanding and they want like, you know, long texts with complicated um, content, but they also need a lot of help um, writing and honing their writing skills. And this is a great way to do it. So you're reading, you're speaking, you're writing and you're listening. You've got all the skills there. Okay. so. If we think about how our PWP framework, then this works, doesn't it? Because the pre, we did a little 20 minute language sprint to, to, to think about our animals. So that was our pre task. Um, our while task was note taking and the post task is summarizing or putting the text back together again. Of course, you're not expecting um, students to come up with a perfect text that's absolutely identical um, to the one you read. But that's also a nice thing that you can do. You can compare the text and point out the differences, um, make corrections perhaps, um, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same as long as the, the grammar and the structures aren't too wonky and that's absolutely fine. Do you think you might use that in one of your classes? It's also easy to do online as well, isn't it? Okay, so this is... Um, where the text was taken again uh, from, from this double page. So if you want to use um, Spotlight in your online class, the easiest way is to do, is to screen share, of course. Um, so when you, if you subscribe, you will, you can get the e-paper, which is essentially a PDF. And then um, it's quite easy to then to, to share your screen. And then you have some functions 
you can show the sing a single page or a double page, you can zoom in and out. And there's also a side bit bar um, on the left that you can open up, which helps you sort of find the, the page that you're looking for. But it gives your students a focus. So it means that they're looking at the screen rather than uh, looking down, which I think is quite nice sort of looking up and being interacting as well. And, you know, they, they can read the text um, on the screen if they don't have their own subscription, <laughs> of course. Okay, I just wanted to let you know about that. So that's really easy to do. Okay, and another um, task, which unfortunately we can't try out now, is jigsaw reading. Um, so if you're using breakout rooms or once we're back in normal classrooms, this is quite nice too. Um, for students to engage, a way for them to engage with text. So you find um, some short, nice short texts, um, put students in groups of three or four or even two and give them a text each and they each read their own text and then they can take notes if they want. And then you need to take those texts away or ask them to turn them over. And then they should tell their partners or the other people in the group about their text. Yeah. And so, again, they, they have a real motivation. They pay, you know, they have there's a different attention, I think, to the text because they know they're going to be summarizing it or, to, or talking about it afterwards. And then they're keen to hear um, the other students about their other students' texts as well. So, again, you're um, practicing uh, reading, listening, uh, writing, if you include note taking and speaking. So that's another great thing that you can do with text. And this is also really good with, you can use short, small, um, a few short texts, but you can also break up a longer text into chunks and, and do it that way as well. So that's another nice uh, way to deal with text. So you should try out, hopefully. There we go. So I just want to tell you briefly about Spotlight in the Classroom. I mentioned um, before that it's a supplement. So that um, Cheryl, lovely Cheryl here, you can see her picture. Um, she takes um, interesting texts each month and, and um, designs really nice and creative activities that go along with them. So that's, I'll give you an example. This is um, Colin Beaven's column, regular column. An interesting picture, isn't it? <laughs> and she's designed a nice activity to go with that. Like sort of reading out the text and instead of reading out sort of tricky words or words that you've identified before, you call out the student's name and the student's name has to say the word that's missing. So it's a different way to do a gap fill, but also a nice activity. There you go. So how to get Spotlight in the classroom? Um, basically, you can get it here if you go to spotlight uh oblique uh, learn packet. There's uh, lots of information about how to get it there. So you uh, subscribe to the magazine as a teacher and then you get the supplement for free. You can see we've got a special offer there, gratis, one magazine and one supplement for free to try it. Um, and then if you want to have access to the digital archive, that's also a fantastic thing. Um, you can see there in German, it says, um, and so up until the end of this current school year, you can get free access to the digital archive. Um, you only have, you have read read only um, access. The archive goes as far back as 2016, so there are loads and loads of magazines and texts in there for you. And the free access is until the 31st of June. So there is perhaps an offer for you that you shouldn't miss. There you go, and it's the same. Sorry, that was my dog shaking himself. There you go. And then, so this is what the digital archive will look like. You can see you've got the magazine there, the plus um, workbook and the CD or the download as well. Okay, there you go. So one last thing I'd like you to, um, I'm gonna do a share with Mentimeter, one more Mentimeter. I'd like to know um, what, um, where is it? Yeah. Sorry, there it is. Um, which, of the activities you're going to try out. So could you go to, it should be the same code. You don't have to type that in again because I've changed the slide and I'd just like to know if you're going to try out any of these fantastic activities I showed you this afternoon and that we'll see, have a look at who's going to try out what. You should see the numbers coming in there being visualized with on Menti. There we go. Well, I'm glad some of you are going to try some of these things out. I think what I like about them is that they're, they're highly adaptable. You can use them at different levels, different types of classes, 
um, and they, they've always worked. Because sometimes it's, you can be at a loss at what to do with text. So there you go, the answers are coming in, as you can see there. There you go. So thank you so much um, for participating um, so willingly and readily. I hope you got something out of it um, and have a nice, have a lovely weekend. I'll just let those answers come in because you're still, <laughs> you're still contributing. If you've got any questions for me, you can um, write them in the chat. Oh, good. I hadn't seen your, your comments here. Great, that's great. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you. All right, so I'll, I'll swap, swap back to my presentation. There you go. Okay. So we managed to do everything. Well done, everyone. Well done, me. <laughs> and thanks again for participating.